So now we've talked about random variables pretty exhaustively, and the next step is to talk about more than one random variable at a time. So this is, I'm going to start with two random variables, and we can generalize the idea to really any number of random variables, but let's start with two. Okay, so the setup is very much the same. We do some sort of a experiment. We have a sample space. We get an outcome in the sample space, and now that outcome produces two numbers on the real line instead of just one, right? So I get basically an outcome x and outcome y. And each of these is a random variable, right? So it's like saying, for example, let's suppose that I, you know, flip a coin um, five times and x equals the number of heads that I got and y equals the time or the uh, position of the first head. So I'm doing an experiment, and I'm deriving two numbers from that same experiment, okay? And the two numbers are clearly related to each other, right? So this is going to bring into this new concept that we're going to call independence, and so we're going to talk about that in more detail in a future lesson, okay? So this is kind of a discrete case, but I can also think about, you know, um, continuous versions, right? So for example, I have a um, experiment get some outcome. So I could think of, instead of those two outcomes falling on the uh, number line, I could think of it as producing a point in the xy plane. Okay, That's a little bit more maybe of an intuitive way to think about things. For example, um, let's suppose that I'm driving a car and I, and I pick a point of my trip and x comma y is the GPS coordinates of my, of my car. Or I throw a dot a dart at the dash, <laughs> I'm thinking about cars. I throw a dart at a dartboard and I look at, for example, the position in terms of radius and angle on the dartboard. Or I record the low and the high temperature on a given day, right? These are all things that kind of make sense in the context of plotting things on a two dimensional axis. And so all of the ideas that we had from one dimensional random variables carry over into two dimensional random variables. The ideas of events and CDF and PDF and expectations and so on. And there are some new ideas we're going to talk about too in a couple lessons from now. So um, let's talk about events first of all. So events then are basically just regions of the 2D plane. So um, for example, um, you know, what do events look like? I could say, okay, in the GPS case, what is the event that I am less than five kilometers from my house, right? So here's my house, and then this would be the event that corresponds to x, y being in that range. Or I could say I'm going to um, look at the height and the weight of all the students in my class, and I'm going to plot height versus weight. And there's something called the body mass index that relates these two things together. I don't know exactly the formula, but it's some sort of a thing that looks kind of like this. And so I could say, okay, what's the probability that your body mass index is in a certain range? Now, these are kind of weird looking events. It's definitely more common to look at events that are rectangles. So, um, you know, much more likely to see events that are along the lines of something like this. Either I'm in some box or I am in some sort of a stripe or something like that. And so in particular, one event that we're really concerned about is related to the CDF of these joint random variables. So the CDF now has two indices, right? To denote, number one, that we care about these two random variables and we're asking about a certain pair of values. And again, this is the capital F for CDF. So the definition of this is exactly the same as we had before, just with the added twist of having a second random variable. Okay, And I can see that that corresponds to an event that looks like, here's my xy. It's like saying, what is the probability that I am in this kind of extending uh, quadrant of the plane, okay? So we know some things immediately about the CDF that we kind of inherit from the idea of one dimensions. So for example, I know that all the way out at infinity, I have to have one. And all the way out at 
minus infinity, I have to have zero, right? This is kind of like the analogy to saying on the real line, the CDF has to be one by the time I get to infinity and it's zero if I look all the way at minus infinity, right? Um, and in the same way, if I look at kind of a partial piece of the um, CDF, this is also true, right? All this is saying is that, you know, if I think about the CDF on the plane, this is kind of hard to draw um, on paper, but, you know, all the way out here, way off at plus infinity, comma plus infinity, the CDF is one. And all the way down here at minus infinity, minus infinity, things are zero. And then the CDF is actually kind of like a slopey surface that goes from zero to one across the whole plane. Okay. We're going to make this idea a little bit more concrete in um, a few lectures. Okay. But once I have the CDF, I can use it to look at the probabilities of events like this. Okay. And these events are sometimes called product form events because they look like something that's an interval in X multiplied by an interval in Y. So we can use the CDF to get probabilities of what are called product form events. Fancy word of saying rectangles. Well, the idea is, suppose I have a event that is bounded by um, something like this. This point is a comma b, and this point is c comma d. And I want to know what's this probability. Well, I can get it by looking at the CDF here, starting from c comma d, minus the CDF here, starting from a comma b. Now, if I do that, that's like saying, okay, well, I took this and I subtracted this part off, right? I still need to subtract some more stuff off. So what I could do is I could further subtract um, this stuff, which is, um, actually, before I do that, let me just kind of think about this a different way. Let's suppose I say this. This is going to be a comma d. This is going to be c comma b, right? So if I subtract these things off, this is not quite right. I'm going to fix it. So actually, if I take this, it's like saying, okay, let's suppose that I take this and I subtract this part off. Now this part is gone. Now I subtract this part off. Now this part is gone. But I subtracted this part off here twice. So I actually have to add this back in, not subtract it. I was too quick to say that, right? So let me write this picture in a slightly better way. So this is like saying that the probability of that event is the CDF at C comma D minus the CDF at A comma D minus the CDF at C comma B plus the CDF at A comma B. So if all I had was the CDF, then I could use it to get probabilities of events. Now, as we noticed from the one-dimensional case, then we're going to have to deal with like, okay, well, we really want the PDF of, of uh, random variables, because then it's easier to do this integration without having to deal with the CDF and do all the subtraction, right? So we're going to talk about what are the CDF and PDF for both discrete random variables and continuous random variables in the next couple of lessons.